Hello and welcome back to the Digital Marketing Podcast. My name is Kieran Rogers. And I'm Louise Crossley. And I'm Daniel Rolls. And today, Daniel, we're talking about marketing and AI tools. It has been a bit of a critical mass point this week because a couple of things happened. So uh, the one that I thought was really interesting, there's been loads and loads of coverage of this online um, and it was this podcast episode <laughs> and it was uh, Joe Rogan interviewing Steve Jobs. Now, as far as I understand, I don't think Joe Rogan ever met Steve Jobs. I don't think the two were people in the same room at any point. Maybe they were, maybe I don't know. But it, this was a podcast that was done in their voices by artificial intelligence, but the script was also based on how they both talk and they used AI to create a conversation between these two people and then output it in their voice. When you listen to it, the voices are pretty much uncanny. They're pretty good versions um, of this. And the conversation is very much in their tone of voice. And and you, you can kind of listen to it and go, this isn't really a real conversation. You can kind of work it out. But it's so much closer than you speak. What, what, you listened to it, Louise, didn't you? Yeah. What did you think? creepily accurate. Yeah. Obviously, it's not quite there yet. And there's sort of some points where you can pick that. Yeah, this is a bit of an odd it. conversation. Yeah. This is a bit fragmented or a bit strange. But in the grand scheme of things, it's really impressive. Yeah. And I think just this whole point that everything was created by an AI. So we'll put it into the show notes, targetinternet.com forward slash podcast. You can, you can listen to it there and see what you think. So that happened. Then you've suddenly seen absolutely tons and tons of art that's been created by AIs recently. So what we're suddenly seeing is like you can go in and there's and I'll explain where this kind of comes from and why it's all happening at once. And you can put in a description and of a particular scenario and it will create an image for you. Most of it's terrible. Some of it's amazing. Is it art? Is it, is it? Oh, yeah, exactly. It's a very, it's a very chin-stroking <laughs> question. Um, but it's being entered into competitions and winning, and then people are finding out it's AI-generated and being outraged and so on as well. And then we've got art competitions that are banning AI-generated art, so it's suddenly getting into all these ethical questions about things. So that's really interesting. What, why is this happening all at once? Well, the, the other thing that we've been talking about for a while and has now become a really kind of mainstream conversation on Twitter, particularly this week, was the AI writing tools. Mm. Now, you introduced me to this in, in the first place. So explain the tool in particular we're talking about, and then just give us some context for it, and then yeah. I want to talk about it a bit. Yeah. So the tool I love the most is definitely Jasper, yep. jasper.ai. Yep. Um, it's great. Like You've got all sorts of templates in there for writing specific types of things. Um, so you pick the right template, and this will do you all sorts of things. It'll write you a blog outline for any subject. You know, so give you like 10 bullet points um, that you can then go away and, and write up. You know, so it gives you a nice outline, to, like framework to, to, to work with. It'll give you titles and meta descriptions for product pages or for, you know, your main web pages. It'll do all sorts of like mundane writing tasks for you. What you do need to do is you need to give it a bit of structure and you need to give it a little bit of text to work with. Um, and very often when I'm demoing this, what I'll do is write something really bad. Like it just literally off the top of my head as it comes to me, I just sure. type it all in. And unbelievably bad, some of the like demos that I've done. And it'll take that and turn it into something that everybody's like, yeah, that's really good. Because that was really rubbish what you wrote, Kieran, and what Jasper's output is really, really very, very good. What, what amazed me was that for definitions, this is quite good. So if you just go PDCA model, so plan, do, check, act, marketing yeah. model, it will give you a definition. It will tell you plan, do, check, act, and it will give you a summary at the end. the context. Now, what's what's interesting is I was like, well, has it just copied this or someone else's? Mm -hmm. And it hasn't. It's used an AI to look at all the other versions. And then you you, you also have a plagiarism check yep. that you can check that it isn't just like something yep. somewhere else as well. And I, I you know, use these in combination. It's about augmenting. It's not about just getting it to write everything for you from scratch. I mean, you use it, Louise, on a day-to-day, -day, don't you? So what do yeah, you do with it? There's some quite good stuff on there. So, for example, the one I like is the pass formula. Right. So you're looking at problem, agitate, solution. And in terms of, for example, writing social posts, it's really good because it breaks it down into those three elements. So, you know, when you put something out, you're identifying what the problem is for your customer. You're provoking them a little bit, but then you're making it clear to them how your product solves their problem. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a great tool. And if you haven't used it yet, yeah. by the way, in the show notes targetinternet.com forward slash podcast there is a link that will get you a free trial and i think ten thousand free words yeah so you can play around there so have a look at that but what i think is is amazing is i was not convinced by this maybe a year ago when i first tried it out 
and the engine behind it, the AI behind it has improved so much. Now, I was trying to work out where is this, because there's so many of these writing tools all of a sudden. Just suddenly all yeah. popped up well, like I, a I, ring I, of mushrooms. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, overnight. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I want to... Seasonal. It is, it is yeah. seasonal. It's all terminal. Well done. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was really interested why that had been the case. And what I found, they're all powered by the same thing, or a lot of them are anyway. There are these open source platforms that are creating these artificial intelligence and then you pay for access. But like, you know, 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.004 cents for a group of words. Yeah. And it's kind of, so the one that, that this is kind of based on is uh, an organization called OpenAI mm -hmm. and they have GPT-3. Right. And that's the third iteration of this GPT um, and it's something that's good at dealing with language. So you can take that and, and what Jasper have done really well is they have put this amazing interface, but also they've really, they're squeezing the most out of it. They're getting you to use it in different structures, like the different frameworks and so on as well. Now, when I was um, at the HubSpot conference and uh, we were speaking to some of the people from HubSpot, what was really interesting, and you're, if you listen to the interview, it comes out in the interview, you're saying, what you've got now, you've got something that can generate text for you on a particular topic, okay? Um, what they've also created is DAL E2. DAL E2 is another one of these AIs, and it's for generating images. As in the artist. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, as DAL E, yeah. as in DAL E, yeah, exactly. Oh, nice. So DAL dash E2, similar kind of thing, right? And what was what was pretty amazing is this: this is the one where you type in a description, and it creates creates an image for you. And what they were saying at HubSpot is, well, you can just think, you'll just go and give it a title. It will write the blog post. It will create a unique image for you, and then. Another AI will take your voice, like something like Descript, and it will read it out and turn it into a podcast automatically. And you've had to put four words in to generate that. So what differentiates your value? What's going to make you different from anyone else that's able to do this? And it's always been the case, you know, I'm a great uh, illustrator. And then something like Photoshop comes along, other people have access to it. It augments people. So it's understanding how to use these tools, understanding how to get the most out of them. Originality is still massively important. The ability to drive those artificial intelligence to do things is really important. So I think as marketers, our skill set is going to have to change along, along with this as well. But this, this Dali 2 thing, this all, this blew my mind. This thing called outpainting. Have you seen this? It's all, oh, this is amazing. So you give it a painting and they will take a classic painting mm -hmm. of um, maybe the Mona Lisa. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you'll just grab the outer edge of it and you'll expand it. So say you've got a picture of me like this and you yeah. can just say there's a background around me. Yeah. Um, it's got a picture of my face and then you can select a bit of the background and it will start expanding the room. What does it put right. in there? It puts in things like that should be in there. A plate of apples or something well, it, it, randomly it, in the background. Yeah, it would basically yeah. come out and it will say, well, the background, the wall's like this. So it might have pictures. Walls have right. pictures on them. Right. They have a skirting board at the bottom and it uses AI oh. to generate, but using that style, so you can make a picture bigger and bigger. And it was coming up with some amazing things. And the apple follows you around the room. It's amazing. <laughs> right? But it's, it's really interesting. Yeah. Then um, I saw the same thing applied. You're obsessed with your virtual reality kind of stuff. It's the new QR codes to you. Um, we went for this long period of time, Louise, where... Kieran wouldn't stop talking about QR codes. And eventually, because yes. of COVID, it all came true. I was right. <laughs> he was right, like for 10 years. For years, years. I was in the wilderness being ridiculous. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and now virtual reality, you know, we've, we've same thing. He's, we're kind of getting there with it. What this was doing was using an AI to real-time generate mm. a virtual reality world. Mm. And as you went into it, it changed and morphed. And it was very, very dreamlike. Mm. Like, really interesting. So... But there's kind of a like Inception, was it? Yeah, kind of yeah, interesting yeah, kind yeah. of thing. So it's, if you don't know Inception, it's one of my favourite films, if not my favourite film. So what was interesting with this was that everyone, there's been a bit of backlash against these AI-generated images because if you don't do a good job of it, mm. how you tell it to do it, it comes up with some pretty weird things. Like if you expect to have text, it will kind of create languages that don't exist and you're <laughs> reading it. And human faces, they look quite nightmarish and things like that sometimes. And they're going, oh, it's the new clip art. Now, this was a very dismissive game. You know, putting clip art into your word was so naff. Quite different. Yeah. And they're going, well, this is the same thing. It's just a bit of naff and loads yeah. of people. Yeah, if you use it badly. Yeah. I agree. But I think we're at the cusp of something now. Um, you get a paintbrush. You, right. Use it badly. Yeah. It's be awful. Yeah, but you could actually do some quite useful things <laughs> with it as well, right? <laughs> now, what's interesting, if you want to look at this, by the way, there's a great thing. Um, there are other, so we talk about open AI. Yeah. Well, there's another one called Stability um, AI that have a load of tools and they have these collectives that work together. And what does that do? Uh, well, this one, they've got loads of different ones, but they've got one called Stable Diffusion and that's an image generator as well. Right. So, and there's a free version of it online that you can test out. So you can go in and we'll put the link into the show notes as well. But again, you can put a description in and for free, you can generate images. 
Um, Jasper, the writing tool, you upgrade and you, it will generate images for you already. And I've been playing around with this loads as well. I, I would say 95% of what I get out is rubbish. 5% is like, wow. That's... <laughs> and you know, like you're looking for clip art to go in, you're not clip art, in stock, I'm obsessed with clip art now, mm. the stock photography. Yeah. The way you stock photography, you do it well, it can be a really great benefit. Otherwise, it's just like two people shaking hands. Yeah. And it's it's the same kind of thing. You've got to learn to steer. It's got to be on brand. When you do those videos with something like Lumen 5, which allows you to do explainer videos, that's got AI, which we'll come to in a moment, but you can do them in a really rubbish way. And it's just like, yeah, it's words over images. Or I've seen Google do them, maybe not using Lumen 5, but it's just like, wow, because the music and the images mm. and the text mm. were just right. The impact was huge. Now, this is where the difference is at the moment. So you use Lumen 5, Louise, yeah. right? So what do you do with it? How Maybe explain to people the process. So I use Lumen 5 to create explainer videos, basically for social media and for blog posts. Um, but there is an AI functionality to it. So for example, if you've got a blog post on a website, you can take that blog post, then put it into Lumen 5. And what it will do is it will scan the text and it will try and pull out the parts of the blog that it thinks is the most important. And it will pop it onto these different slides of the explainer videos. Um, and it will also try and recommend videos for you to use to complement that. It's not perfect. It yeah. sort of is a work in progress, but just like any AI and with Jasper as well, it definitely gives you a sort of starting point. I think that's... The, the, what you've always said key. yeah so look, there's a great danger with these tools that everybody like it's bad enough with actual humans like everybody using you know just copying tools like else. sumo to see what's popular and what's mm. trending and then let's or let's do another 500 word blog article on blah 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 like, mm. we don't need that because it's just the same but slightly different and that that's the danger with these tools but I, where i've seen them really come alive i should showed jasper to a really great copywriter friend of mine and she was like, nah, it's awful. Like, and actually to her, what I, it output something I thought was okay. But for her, understanding the subtleties of the brand mm. and the messaging, mm. like, and actually when she talked me through, I'm like, oh my God, it's awful. Like it, it stuck out like a like mm. a French kiss at a family reunion when you saw its, you know, its saggy ends. It was like it's wrong. It was just kind of all wrong. And I could see that. So, but but that's that's the argument, I think. Like you need, yes, they do save a lot of time. But Louise, don't you find you really need time to be creative to create a good one? Yeah. Like it needs that input. It needs that curation. It needs that, you know, thinking behind, you know, the, the culmination of things that are being pulled together. And that's what you would have had with, you know, something that Google have done where they've had, you know, lots of top creative minds and agencies oh, working working on it. Um, but actually what I do find it does to give you some good, I suppose, like a clothes horse to you know hang the clothes right it gives you some quite nice structure it, it gets you over the you know to create something completely from scratch yeah a lot lot more 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 time and i think when you understand no it's augmenting that's when these things really come in there is however a real danger that we end up in a world where everything's all too much the same mm. you know and, and actually there if everybody's using these tools it's the brands that bring in the creative brilliance it's going to become Completely. so much more valuable. And I think, you know, I've seen this with some of the news algorithms that, you know, we talked about this during the pandemic, didn't we? And I actually deleted my news app because all it would ever give me is COVID news because it learned that that was all I've been looking at. Mm. Actually, there's lots more to me than just being worried about COVID, yeah. you know, and actually I've moved on, but the app was still was still trained. And this is the, this is the problem where a lot of these AI systems don't have enough randomness to be real. I guess that's that's the sort of concept. We need that as humans yeah. because that's what sets our favourite brands above all the other, you know, wannabes. Well, what's interesting is the way that these AIs are being built. Those that are being based on neural network type approaches, making mm. how our brains work. Mm. If you actually get good enough at that, you build some of that creativity and that randomness and those kind of things in as well. So this will develop and it will become interesting. But you're right in that if everyone can do stuff really easily, everyone will do it easily. And it just means that the bar's higher. Mm. So you need to make sure that you are being more creative. You are actually doing something a bit different and so on as well. But they can be great augmentation tools as well. So I, I liked, um, found one at soundraw.io. So you might have bought some stock music before, some sound clips to go on the podcast or something else like that. This is an AI for generating sound. I was playing with this this morning right. when I woke up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Yeah. It's really quite good, isn't it? It is. And you can put yeah. a style, you can put a pace, you can put tone, all those kind of things, and it will generate music. And then you can have a subscription and you can use those. And then no one else can use the same thing afterwards at that point. So 
it's, but again, a, a composer will listen to one of these and goes, that's terrible. It's really, I'm really fascinated on the rights for that. Mm. This opens up a real Pandora's box on who owns the rights. And actually, one of the things they stipulate is, look, if it's created in our app, we own the copyright. Right, there right? you go. But we're not going to lock it all down, but we have to do that. Because if we don't, you could upload your soundtrack to YouTube. You could claim it as your IP, and yep. then YouTube won't allow anybody to uh, like use anything similar. So that locks it down. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the other nightmare of, well, what if you've created a, a track in Sound, sound Raw, and you've created another one, and they're the very same similar. Settings, Are yeah. you going to sue him because you own the, no, cause you own the copyright? Because you, well, No, you, you, you can't. And the only thing that breaks that is if you've added more than 60% of other stuff onto it, okay. then it what that then it's a bit more then it like becomes yours kind of yours thing. yeah but this is a really big area of, of mm. questioning now and, and of law is that if i use a tool using ai to generate something do i then own that does the platform own it um but how does that work i think the way they've done it's really clever like yeah. they're really above board like we're never gonna see you if you're using our stuff and you don't even have to still have the subscription so louise you could take out a subscription this month create 400 different like clips yeah. and then you can use those quite legitimately in perpetuity even though your subscription cancels at the end of the month so you know their commitment to you is look we have to own the copyright and this is why because it protects you yep. as you use it protects us um but you can do whatever you like with it once you've created it i think that's that's a nice approach yeah so th so these tools are spring up everywhere so we just wanted to flag up a few of them for you we'll, there's a couple more that we'll put into the show notes that you can you can take a look at as well but I think we need to start learning these tools, how to use them, how to manipulate them so we can get the most out of them because it will get to the point it's going to get easier and easier to create content with them. And we have to make sure we're differentiated. It was the thing like, you know, as soon as everyone's doing content marketing, you need to do exceptional content marketing to stand out. And everything that keeps coming up at every conference I go to at the moment is about this kind of digital burnout. Too much stuff. This is going to make it a thousand times worse. <laughs> I remember back in the day where there was a tool, it's an like SEO, kind of dodgy SEO tool you connect it up to your server and it would go off and it would create 300 WordPress websites. It would fill them full of junk content on a particular topic and they would all link back to your website in about eight minutes. Well, the possibility of doing stuff like that that's actually quite hard to differentiate is this real or not content. Mm. So we're going to see more of this stuff. I reckon there's going to be loads of SEO spam starting to spring up with this stuff as well. Um, people's tolerance for rubbish content will get lower. So you have to build trust. And this is really interesting. When... In times when we are bombarded and burnt out and we're getting more AI content and there is a recession potentially and there's financial things, people have got, you know, so many things they're thinking about, brand becomes more important. So if people have trust in your brand, it will cut through a lot of these problems and a lot of this noise. So actually, it seems counterintuitive when there is a financial crisis or there's a, anything like that, invest in brand. Because that's what's going to actually survive, keep you alive in the long term, I think. Um, and we're doing that. You know, we're rebranding at the moment and we're really trying to invest in it. So, and I think it's just trust in people is what helps to cut through this. I, I think it's about doing less better Yeah, for me. Because that's the danger. All these tools mean, you know, I can do a million More. things badly or mediocrely mm. and that just doesn't, doesn't well, if you just that, do that's them, one way to like just annoy people well, if you do it as average yeah. you just won't get anywhere because everyone else is doing average it just doesn't stand out so well, it doesn't get any traction that's why you talk about staying ahead of the curve isn't it yeah. because that's then it. by the time everyone's joined in everyone's jumping on the trend you excel at what you're doing you that's it stand out. That, well, no, the podcast I mean the reason the podcast is popular is obviously it's great <laughs> but we got in really early I mean like 11 years ago yeah, yeah. so we would be able to build an audience before that was kind of a, a huge thing so the, there was one more on there I want to know about podcast.ai no that, that was the one where that so, podcast we were speaking about at the beginning lives so if you go to podcast.ai oh, okay. it's where you can right. find it they, they put it on this domain nice. so you can go and see it but the whole point of that website is this is something they do all the time right. this one's got loads of traction right. but they are generating AI generated podcasts so I think yeah go and have because there'll be different things on there it won't just be that that podcast as well um, Pick Tree was another that was kind of similar to Lumen 5 did lots of automatic video editing I haven't played around with it much it's kind of Lumen 5 meets the script so right. it's got the whole it, you know it transcribes everything looked really great for creating you know short little promo clips quite e easily yeah um, it does some nice things yeah no check it out and, th and there's going to be more of these tools all the time so we'll we'll keep bringing them in we'll keep on trying to give you reviews and what they're like um all of the things we spoke about today will be in the show notes targetinternet.com forward slash podcast and again thank you for listening to the digital marketing podcast please subscribe for more videos like this and visit targetinternet.com for more free digital marketing resources